What's up, people? So, lots to tell you. And I'm trying to think how I want to do this one. Put the glasses on, because I'm getting old, y'all. Things are blurry. So, I, uh, gonna show y'all the craziness I'm dealing with with these folks. Because there's other drama with this load. <laughs> so, I did the load to Costco, dropped that off. Um, that went fine after the drop off was fine. They sent me my new load, which is a meat load. I'm fueling in Nebraska and picking up load in Nebraska um couple of issues though with the load number one they gave me an address so we have a GPS system which I'm gonna show y'all pictures in the beginning the GPS system on ghetto GPS shows me one address the order for the load shows me a completely different address for the shipper so what should happen is I should be able to just hit a button and it automatically routes me to where I'm going. The problem is they've given me like a 2211 Swift Road East. That ain't the correct address. Matter of fact, when I Google that address, it talks about a housing development. Okay. The correct address is the 555 South Stir Road. I had my father on the phone rolling, just talking about all the drama with these folks. So I sent a message asking them which one is correct. They said, well, I show this. So why does the GPS do this? So I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to put these pictures up. I'm not going to show you. Uh, you know, the system ain't going to tell where I work, but I'll put it, I'm going to put it up so y'all can see that I'm, I'm not lying to you. But I also called a customer because I can't trust anything they tell me in that office. And I said, I'm with XYZ Company. Which address is correct? And she said the 555. I said, thank you, ma'am. So, my load doesn't pick up till Monday. Y'all don't know which Monday it is, but don't pick it till Monday. Yeah. And early in the morning, very early in the morning. So, I called the shipper to see, do you have any parking on the lot? Because the one in Phoenix does have parking on the lot. They say they don't have any parking. I said, okay. So at this point, I said, well, I'll try to find a truck stop near you because I'm going to be there tomorrow. So I got to find a truck stop that's close because I got to be up at midnight to go pick this load up. Well, I'll be in there about 1130 to pick the damn load up and then head to Chi-Town. Um, hopefully it's on the outskirts of Chicago because I really hate going into Chicago. It's like hellish. And um, make sure that the information matches because Lord knows these folks are crazy. Just everything is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Anywho, uh, that's not what I really want to talk about. I'm going to talk about it, but y'all see it on there. So because most people won't believe me. Oh, and the video. The video resignation it's going to stay up till December 6th with the with the gun conversation. If if, if some of y'all didn't, well, some people know who this is. So I ain't going to say. Some of y'all who watch me know because y'all seen it too. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy as hell. And they still got it up. So I, that tells you even more because if I was in a regular business, this, this right here would have been taken down immediately. They'd be like, oh, hell to the no. Matter of fact, it might have been edited. They would have just edited and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm signing out. You know, it's been great, boop, boop, boop. And that, that gun thing, that gun comment would have been cut. So, I, I yeah, that's crazy as hell. Um, I'm sorry, it's up to December 1st. There's a new one. Thanksgiving video. I watched that one. But anyway, um, right now, I got another ghetto reefer. And I had to come through Wyoming. So I got unloaded in Utah yesterday. And I had enough time. I had a whole 
good 11 hour window I could have drove but I had to come since I'm going to Nebraska you got to go through Wyoming on I-80 so we're going to talk about wind y'all wind and we're going to talk about the states <laughs> in which you always need to check and I oh shoot it's on that oh hold on oh, there's an app let me see if I can get pictures of it and send it to me via the other phone and I'll do it later it's an app well it's a it's a link to your web browser and weather and I love it and I just discovered it through a Google search and it gives you like it'll tell you like the weather where you're at tell you if there's any precipitation snow whatever the percentage it'll give you like I think three or four days worth of data data and it'll give you wind and wind speeds and it'll tell you like so last night when I went to look and I found it I was like this is cool as hell it's on the site and I just put in Wyoming weather and it was like one of the ones that came up and I and it said something about wind speed I was like that's what I need so I clicked it on my phone and then it has a drop down and it give you like today tomorrow and I think the next day and you can it gives you hour by hour so you can scroll hour by hour and see so the wind speed it says strong winds gusts up to 50 miles an hour well I'm empty I'm driving I was driving empty all the way from Utah to Nebraska and 50 mile an hour, I just be laying on my side somewhere rolled over. So yeah, we don't drive empty 50 miles an hour gust. So it was, I forgot what the, the miles per hour were like 30 plus miles an hour winds with 50 mile an hour gust. So I ended up having to stay in Utah extra, an extra day because I would have already been in the brown, hell, I would have almost been to the customer today. I would have been to the customer today. By the end of the day, I've been to the customer had I left tomorrow, yesterday, Friday. Um, unfortunately, uh, I had to sit sit it out in, well, fortunately, because I'm not rolled over on my side, sit it out and I found a flying J and I parked there and slept until um, one o'clock, one o'clock. I got up from like midnight, one o'clock. Headed out and then I had a little bit of gusts but my gusts were like between 20 and 30 miles an hour gust. So, talking to my newbies on wind so let me let me kind of share this with you because some of y'all i got that shirt on with the name on it some of y'all may not have been trained by your trainer on wind and i had one of my trainees back when i trained he was a military guy so he had driven the military so i was okay so the first day out i mean i have to sit next to him i can't they had a certain number of hours they had to drive with you next to me before y'all went into team mode So, first day out, um, we had high winds in Colorado, and we had 50 mile an hour gusts, okay, 50 or 55, something like that, it was up there, between 50, 50, I won't usually go over, usually 50, so I think it was like 50, 55, I can't remember, it was real close. So, I had him drive it out, because he said, you know, he told me, he told me his history, he said, this is where Chuck school I went to, I drove for the military. I come from a military family. He said, I know how to drive. I know how to bat. He did. The only thing he's bad and wasn't good on blind side. And I said, okay. I said, so I said, I have to sit in the seat. If I see, you know, have him drive around a lot, have him back into it. And he could back. He could drive. I mean, he could handle a truck. I said, well, you're going to drive us out. And we got high winds today. So you're going to learn one of the most valuable lessons of driving in wind. I said, and I'm going to tell you, grip that steering wheel tight and enjoy the ride. He was so beat by the time we got done. We stopped in uh, somewhere on the outskirts of, of Colorado. I can't remember where we were going. I think we were heading towards down towards Mexico. Somewhere. I can't remember. We were heading somewhere south. He was whooped. He kicked, kicked his ass. Colorado. I think we were heading somewhere in New Mexico. I'm pretty sure. Colorado. That, that riding, driving gust is hard driving strong winds and gusts is a very hard thing today was a little bit difficult i'm a little tired but i'm not as exhausted as what i could be if it was worse but i'm not loaded so i've actually pulled off because there were signage that said it was going to be 40 plus mile an hour gusts i want to talk about that too when you're going through some of the states and they have the signs up and i'm not telling you not to pay attention to them pay attention to them but you may have to double check 
whether they've been updated or not. Because I've been on, like in California, when I went to California to start this whole crazy craft run, they kept saying there was high winds. I didn't have any high winds, and I was empty going in. But those high winds were for earlier in the day. So what I did in our trucks and in most trucks, they come with weather band on your regular radio. But if you have a CB, you should also have weather band. Also, if you have a smartphone, you should be able to see pretty current weather conditions. And if you can find it, I'm gonna try to get like I said, I'm gonna try to get some snapshots of that app. If I can, I might be able to do some screen captures of it. And if I can do some screen captures, I'll put it in here and I'll see if I can find the name of it and put it in the description. Um, it's not an app. It's a it's a website. It's a website. But when you do the Google search, I'll see. I think it's like weathersomething.com. I have to find out. Um, but it gives you the capability when you do the search to actually create a home page shortcut on your phone. And that's what I did. So when you check those things, those, your weather band, 511. Say a command. Uh, exit. The, the, this, see, the thing. hold on, let me turn this off. It thinks I see it so like voice command when it hears command you can talk to it and tell it what to look for we'll talk about that that later so when you when you go to look at your weather even though there might be signage up on the freeways it says high winds you definitely want to take account of it. like I pulled off when I saw the 40 mile an hour in uh here in Wyoming well I'm in Wyoming I'm in Nebraska now in Wyoming when I saw that 40 mile an hour, I pulled off immediately because I knew I was empty. It said 40 mile an hour gust. And I began to search and call. Um, I was able to see that the current conditions were, I think it was 20 some mile an hour. It was, it was 20 some mile an hour gust in the area. And the wind was like 17 or 18. So. I had to make a decision and I'm thinking 30 mile an hour, 40 mile, 30. And it kept saying it was under 30. I'm like, well, it's only under 30. So they might've had a gust of 40 that they registered, but it wasn't consistent from what I could see currently. So I made a decision. This is part of you as a driver to make that, 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 that cognizant decision. I looked for the, the next closest truck stop because I was at some of the whole mall truck stop and I was not that far. I was an hour and a half outside of Laramie. So I went to the Petro at Laramie where I actually got dinner too for later. I was outside and I was trying to step through Wyoming, but if I had to shut down in Laramie, I would shut down there because there's a Petro and a Flying J there. Put you around more trucks in case you're stuck for a longer period of time. And with Wyoming this time of year, your weather could change on a dime. It's like Colorado. So at this point, I went ahead and I... um. I went ahead and, and got to Laramie, but I did have some pushing. And when you're driving gusty winds, A, don't be on the damn cruise control. Cruise control needs to be off. B, you need to be on pedal. And C, when the wind is pushing you, like so if it's pushing this way, not as hard turn, but you want to keep turning your wheel into it so that you keep in the truck on balance. You don't want to just let it just keep pushing because it's going to just push your ass over. So you want to turn your wheel into the gust. Not hard, but just enough to keep you in in your lane until the gust. Because you're going to, the gust, will, you, you'll get past it. And you're going to get them periodically. There's not going to be, co uh, it, it won't say gust. If it's going to be constantly for 50 miles an hour, you don't need to be in that. But if it says gust, it just means you're going to hit spots where it's going to gust wind. In Nebraska, I mean, in, in Wyoming, it's pretty much almost the same areas, and you'll get to know it if you drive it. So you just have to be cognizant. But the other thing you need to look at, the one good thing about Wyoming, opposed to where I'm at right now, Nebraska, I like Nebraska because they keep their freeway sides clean. They, they mow them. But what I like about Wyoming is because they have their weeds, they don't cut them like Nebraska does, I can always see how the wind is blowing because we can't see wind, right? So you have to see what it's doing. So I can see by looking at the grass or the weeds and the trees, the direction in which the wind is blowing, which tells me how it's hitting my truck. So if I'm heading east and I can see the wind is heading east, like the, the, the grass is, is bending east, 
then it just means it's blowing my, it's, it's blowing my butt. But if I see it in and at an angle, I know it's blowing me northeast, which means it's hitting part of the side of the trailer. It's not so much this tractor you got to worry about if it was by itself. I mean, it could blow it over with the right kind of wind. It's that empty ass trailer back there that will take you out. So, or whatever you have in there. Rule of thumb for me normally is I normally don't drive 30 mile an hour gusts with an empty trailer. So everything I dealt with today was pretty much under 30. It was um, between 18 and 20, I think they got 27, 28 mile an hour gust. I think I hit one place that they said when I passed it, it was like 30 some mile an hour gust. And I don't know if I hit that gust or not, but when I listened and the whole time when, the, when I started, cause while I was driving from one up until about nine o'clock eight or nine o'clock this morning i didn't have really any wind issues just like wind but once it hit like nine ten o'clock in the morning that's when i started getting into the wind and the gust and so at that point i switched to weather band because i didn't know whether that sign had been updated uh, because they had random signs up they were telling about being sober and da da da. you don't know how often they're updating it um and so that's why what i did is the whole way through wyoming the, once once the wind started, I had nothing but weather band on, weather band the whole ride, and it told me pretty much every hour per hour, it would tell you what your winds were along I eighty corridor, with the city and or and and or mile marker, from east to west on I eighty. Also tells you I twenty five from south to north or north to south. I can't remember. Anyway, it tells you. So on I eighty, it went from east to west, and it told me. Cheyenne is this. This is the wind. This is the gust. If you didn't hear just you just heard wind, no gust, and there's no gust. It's just straight wind, and you make decision to go. Most of the winds were under 20 miles an hour, like 16 to 18. The gust is what you really want to concern yourself when it's that low, because that's nothing. It's when you start getting the 30 plus mile an hour gust, especially 40 and higher, where you have to concern yourself, especially if you're light in your box. I don't drive again more than 50 mile an hour gust in a loaded trailer that's loaded 35,000 or more. I don't. So I got to be somewhere in the like 70, 75,000 pound to almost 80, the full 80 to drive 50 mile an hour gust. That I, I don't. Mm. And I really have to discern whether I'm going to do that depending also on the wind speed. The states that you guys need to check before driving through, especially during the winter months for wind weather conditions definitely snow and inclement weather but wind especially if the weather is good but you want to just check wind number one shares two spots wyoming and kansas always check to see what the wind is there number two new mexico always check that number three tide spot would probably be utah uh, colorado and then utah and actually, who else do I want to put in there? I would probably put Nebraska up there. I'm trying to think, do I want to put Nebraska? So you got you met you got Kansas and Wyoming number one. I would probably put Nebraska up there with New Mexico. So New Mexico and Nebraska. Yeah, and then I would go Colorado and Utah for win. Cali would be in there too. Come in between, depending on where you're at, Cali, it can sometimes be windy because they're right off the water. But you don't, I don't run, you don't, you know, every so often you run into that, you don't run into it like you do. With these guys, it'll be a whole day damn thing. And you got to just pull over. I remember when I first started working for Pride and I got my truck the first time Bill got to see my truck with Pride. And Bill met me in Laramie. It was in Laramie? Yeah, it was in Laramie. And he said, because I was coming out of Colorado, and he said, you're shutting it down here. He said, it's hot winds. I said, hot winds? He said, yeah, you're shutting it down here. And that's where he met me, was there in uh, Laramie. I can't remember how I came out. It was a Colorado low. It was a Colorado low. Something coming from Colorado. I think it was beef. It was beef. And he was living in Colorado at the time, and I had to come through. Um, I was coming through Colorado, beef low. I think it was out of Greeley. And uh, it was JBS, as a matter of fact. And it was actually on the on the farm there. And I had to wait for the load. And when I got it, actually, 
No, 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 no. I lie. I emptied. I dropped a load there and picked up an empty. And I was going somewhere for a potato load and I had to go through Colorado and, uh, and through uh, Wyoming. And so he says, you're shutting it down here because you're empty. And they had Gust in that. That's when I really learned even more about Gust and Wyoming. Because I, I don't think I had driven Wyoming as much when I first started out. Um, I did a lot of the southern states more than anything. I did southern states. Yeah, I did more of the southern states when I started driving. So I did more like, yeah, I did more southern. I didn't do, I mean, I've driven all over, but I didn't do as many northern states as so when I was on my own. And then I pretty much only dealt with the West Coast for a while. Um, yeah. So um, that's pretty much my wind advisory for you guys. So. Definitely check on those, and then when you're driving it, you got to make the decision on what you're going to carry in it, and be very careful. If you're empty, and those winds go over 30 miles an hour, I my, my suggestion is to shut it down. 30 mile an hour gust, 30 mile an hour consistent, you need to shut down. <laughs> anything, anything over 20, if you anything over 20, probably anything uh, like 20 under uh, over 26 miles an hour, and you empty, shut shut it down. Mm -mm. Consistent consistent wind you shut that down if it's 30 mile an hour gust um and anything over the, over anything over the 30 mile an hour gust you need to be loaded probably over 30 mile an hour gust i would anything probably between 30 and 40 i would have to have at least 10 i would say 10 20 thousand or more in the box once you start getting into the 50 thousand or 50 mile an hour gusts that's one to me you need to be damn near close to your 80,000 maximum, somewhere between, you know, probably 70 to 80,000 in the box. I mean, total for your truck. So, yeah, I wouldn't, that's like 35,000 in the box or more. I wouldn't, or 30, 30 some thousand in the box or more. I wouldn't screw with it otherwise. Anyway, um, I'm going to do another video on this jacked up. Well, I'm going to see if I, I might piecemeal it in here. Anyway, and I might do this video with just some pictures from stuff. Because I got some stuff on here I need to delete. Um, that's about it. Um, I don't think anything else. I know y'all see me pull out of hair right there. It's a thick hair, too. I think I'm starting to get whiskers because I'm old. I have a whisker. Anyway, peace, y'all. And I might do another video. It's something else I want to talk about. I think it's something with the driver managers. I can't remember. I was thinking about it on the way here. Two and two.